Rogers TV Durham would like to acknowledge that we are on the treaty and traditional territory of the Mississaugas of Scugog Island First Nation of the Mississauga Nation. May we respectfully honor the knowledge and understanding of the indigenous stewards of these ancestral lands and ensure that the voices of the First Peoples are represented in our collections, programs and services. The opinions expressed in the following programs are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers Cable or Rogers TV. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of At the Heart of Business. I'm your host, Judith Tate. At the Heart of Business is a conversation with women in business discussing their challenges and successes. I'd like to welcome my first guest today, Hannah Stojanowski uh, of Hannah's Mortgages with Hannah. There we go. Sorry, I forgot that for a quick That's second. Okay. Welcome, Hannah. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. This is great. Yeah, I'm just so glad you're here. And I'm just really looking forward to hearing and sharing your story. So tell us a bit about uh, Mortgages with Hannah. What's that all about? Uh, so I'm a mortgage agent located in Durham here. Um, been in business almost 10 years. It'll be 10 years next month. And been in the mortgage industry now almost 23 years. So I've just done mortgages my whole life. Okay, and what got you into mortgages? Um, funny story. Um, so I was uh, unemployed, living at home. I was 19, and my dad said I was three months behind in rent, and I needed to find a job ASAP. So I applied to a bunch of jobs, um, and I just wanted a downtown job, and the mortgage company hired me. Um, and I think I was put on that path for a reason. Um, so we were... Um, we immigrated to Canada in 1988 from England, good old England. Uh, nice. Dad had his own business. Um, Mom's nursing degree didn't translate here. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm the youngest of five kids. There's a lot of kids to manage. So she stayed home with us and looked after us. And Dad went out and started his own business working on lasers. Um, fast forward four years later in 1992, Dad was injured at work. Um, almost deathly injured, almost, almost killed. Um, oh, he wow. wasn't, thank goodness. He's yeah. still with us. Um, but uh, we, we slowly lost everything. We lost the business. Mm -hmm. um, three years later in 1995, we lost the house. The town sold the house uh, because of unpaid property taxes. Um, and um, yeah, mom and dad just, just battled back. I was so proud of the way they handled things. Um, but six years later, so in 2001, when I got this job because I was behind on rent at home, um, it was in the tax department at a mortgage company. And mm. six years earlier, my parents had lost their house due to unpaid property taxes. We didn't know. We didn't know how it worked here. We were immigrants. We had no idea. Mm. Um, so I remember I, when I started at the mortgage company, I started in an admin role. I applied for an admin role. And the day I started, they said, hey, do you want to pay property taxes? We just have a vacancy. And I said, I'm 19. I've never paid taxes before, but I'll try. And then it all came full circle. I think there's a reason I was put in that role to start helping people so what happened to my parents wouldn't happen again wow there's a lot to unpack there yeah. oh my yeah. goodness well um i think it's it's pretty amazing that um you found your 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 purpose from mm -hmm. your pain so what was um like what was that impact like on your your family like your your dad getting in an accident where he almost died there's five kids at home and your mother, you know, you know, immigrating to Canada, and her her nursing didn't translate. What what was all that impact like? What do you remember from being a child growing up? It was devastating. First of all, the impact to my dad, potentially losing my dad, but then watching his struggle back to health. Mm -hmm. um, he was very unwell for a very long time. So mom became his full time caregiver, looking after him. Um, but the neat thing was, I think. Um, in adversity is where we build resilience and mom and dad like they've been married over 50 years they are rocks like they're wonderful Aww. so they um, once they dad was well enough and mom wasn't looking after him full-time anymore they um, set goals so they would go out and they would each make a hundred dollars combined that day and when they hit that goal their new goal was to make a hundred dollars each um, and I remember, I remember tough times, like we're British, so we have Heinz baked beans on toast a lot. <laughs> and I remember the car running out of gas sometimes, but I remember watching mom and dad fight, fight to get back to life. And it was wonderful. Oh, that's so nice. Mm -hmm. That just shows um, how important it is just to be so, just so connected and work as a, a partnership. Yeah. So uh, also 
being a mortgage agent, you were you were working before in downtown Toronto. You like you were in the corporate world. Yeah, I was in the corporate world okay. um, for about 13, 14 years before I started my business, and uh, I think that all shifted for me when my son started JK. Okay. Uh, my daughter was born. My second child was born, and I thought I can't be on the go train. I can't be that far away. So I knew yeah. I wanted to do something closer to home and keep helping the yeah. way I'd been helping before. Okay. And what was that like? going from corporate to being your own boss? It was scary. Yeah. <laughs> it was very different. Um, we had a wonderful team in corporate where we had a marketing, marketing and an HR and legal team and customer service and all of a sudden I was wearing all the hats um, and I thought I'd have more time and more money to be with my family. That's why I quit, was to see my family more. And that first couple of years of business <laughs> was quite the opposite. I think I, I was um, working every waking hour almost, yeah. and when they were asleep as well. And so it was a lot of hard work, but it's paid off. It definitely paid off. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's funny how a lot of people think that uh, going into business on your own and being your own boss should be a bit of a cakewalk. And oh, I'm gonna have more time freedom, and I'm gonna have more money freedom. But what they're not told is, and I can speak from experience, you gotta hustle. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. it's not really it's not a cakewalk. So you really gotta you really gotta hustle. You don't have that time freedom. In the beginning, like eventually as you build your business out, you build your team, you build your systems and processes, you get more of that time freedom and money freedom. But those first couple of years, you are like you're really hustling, yeah. late hours. Um, you know, not a lot of vacations. You're the one, like you're in it. You're working in your business and not just on your business. Yeah. So what was, um, just, yeah, tell us what all that was like, what you learned in that time period where you were building your business with kids at home. Yeah, it was definitely a juggle. I remember um, when I left the mortgage company, one of my favorite managers, she hugged me so tight and she mm -hmm. said, just stick it out two years. Most mortgage agents quit within the first two years. So I tell every new mortgage agent I speak with that because it's true that that pounding the pavement, that making the calls, that going out to networking events, showing up at trade shows, that starts paying off. Something just flips and it all starts paying off. It doesn't mean you can stop hustling. You're right. It's just a different kind of hustle. Now I... I carve out my family time in my calendar. So when there's jump rope for hard or the Terry Fox run at school, I block that time. And nice. I run down to the school and I watch that and then I come back and I continue the hustle. It's just different now, a little bit easier. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, that brings me to my next question about structuring your day because you have to be very disciplined as a, a business owner. How do, you, how do you structure your day or um, reach the goals that you want to reach? What does that look like for you? Yeah, great question. So I block out time in my week for mm -hmm. what I call CEO time, where I'm working okay. on the business. Yeah. Um, and then I, of course, block out my, my family events. And then my calendar's fairly open to clients booking calls the rest of the time. But first I go in and make sure I'm taking care of all the priorities yeah. to stay in business and stay successful in my personal life. And yeah. then I let clients book as much as they want in that free time. Yeah. So focusing on like revenue generating type of activities? Yeah, e everything it takes to run, yeah. the, the run the business side, whether it's tax time, whether it's time to plan my marketing for the year, whatever it is that week, whether it's relicensing time, our licenses due the end of March. So mm -hmm. all those things it takes to keep me in business. And what about, um, a, a team like have you built a team I have I don't have a team right now unfortunately okay. the market last year was a little bit rough um, but I have had different team members join me in the past yeah okay that's yeah. wonderful yeah. so let's talk about leadership so in a professional environment where they can there were, sorry where there can be lots of pressure to conform how do you stay true to your values as a leader you know what I think we focus on why we're there and mm -hmm. what's important to us and that's serving people and serving people in a world that's very scary finances their home their mortgage their bills those can be very scary things if you don't work in them every day like we do so just staying um, compassionate and, mm -hmm. and understanding what they're going through right yeah that's so that's super important yeah and what about uh, any failures that you've had maybe even impactful failures or failures that uh, were more of a, a blessing in disguise. Yeah, tons. 
<laughs> uh, what's that quote? You you don't you don't uh, fail until you just stop trying. Yes. So I just keep going. I'm yeah. a little stubborn that way. But um, failures would be uh, sometimes staffing, sometimes hiring the wrong fit for the role, um, sometimes giving a client you know isn't an ideal client too many chances because I think mm -hmm. I just want to help sometimes and they're just not on a path to help themselves. I can't do everything for them. Mm -hmm. um, so I think those would be my biggest failures, yeah. And how do you see failures? Do you really see them as failures or do you see them as uh, opportunities to improve or as kind of like, um, like a, a, a guideline? Yeah, that, definitely. So I look back on everything yeah. and I say, okay, what went poorly, what went well, what do I want to replicate next time, and what do I need to fix in my process? So I'm very process driven. Um, I remember, yeah, so I've created systems, I use Salesforce for my CRM, so I've created systems oh, and checkpoints to catch everything so that that won't happen again. Yeah. Yes, that's that's good, I love to hear that. I yeah. love, whenever I hear anything about systems and processes, I just, that's that's my thing. Yes, <laughs> me too. That's the only way you grow a business and that's how you get your, your time freedom and your money freedom, yep, so definitely. that's great. Yeah. What is your definition of success? My definition of success, I am, I'm helping people. I'm mm -hmm. giving back my talents to the community. That's important to me because I think if we all did that, how much better the world would be. Mm -hmm. um, and that I get that, that valuable face time with my kids. That Aww. my role as a mama is number one to me. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And who are the people, dead or alive, that have influenced your business path the most and why? Oh, well, my mom and dad, for sure. Oh, I'm, yeah. they, they grew, they raised us in an entrepreneurial mindset and hard work and teamwork and goal setting. Like before I even knew what those things were, I saw it. Um, and then some of the management team at my old corporate job downtown were phenomenal leaders. Mm -hmm. So I learned a lot from them. Um, and then when I was in high school, my parents were in Amway of the good old days. So I oh. got to hear Bob Proctor, <gasps> Les Brown. I remember my first year in business, I was, not doing well. I think mm -hmm. at the one year point I had a really bad day mm -hmm. and I remember Les Brown saying when you fall down on your back make sure you can look up because if you can look up you can get up and I thought okay I'm at the bottom time to get up and Les Brown was ringing in my ears so just those visionaries are, are wonderful impacts on my life. Yeah. Oh I love that. Yeah. And I think he's also the one or maybe well anyways this quote that I've heard if you fall down seven times you get up eight. Get it. That's it. Yeah yep. I think yep. that was him. And but it's not over until I win the age old connect four game with his son. It's oh. not over until I win. Oh, yeah. I love that. I haven't yeah. heard that one. That's yeah. great. Yeah. So where do you see yourself in five years from now? Five years from now, I want to just keep helping as many people as I can. So keep spreading the word about what I do and what sets me apart and, and see my kids grow. I was just saying, I got a kid starting JK and a kid starting high school and just be there for them in all the ways. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. I absolutely love that. Uh, can you share a time when you were resourceful? how that played a key role in your success. Um, we'll flash back to that one year anniversary in business when I thought things would be wonderful and they weren't. Um, I found myself at heart of networking with the wonderful Marlene Marco yes. and I found Claudine the pink coach and all those wonderful ladies to lean on because um, I don't think we can do this alone. So having that team, so going mm -hmm. out and finding the people I needed to help me be the strongest business owner and mom I could be, that was what helped my business grow. I totally agree. Yeah. My first uh, networking event was with um, Marlene Marco's Heart of Networking. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. The queen of networking. And then Claudine <laughs> was my very first business. Oh, right. Amazing. Yeah. 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 Wonderful yeah. ladies. Yeah. All right. Um, what are your like words of advice for anyone going into business? Just don't stop. It is hard work. It is even harder than any job you've ever had. It's like three full time jobs in work. Just don't give up and lean on your business. So much for joining me in this conversation today. Thanks for having me, I appreciate it. And stay tuned, we'll be right back with Lorna Kennedy.
This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. I'm Detective Graf, this is Detective Bateman. I don't know where to start. The truth is usually easiest to remember. This guy wants to give you a statement, and if I was you, I would take it. Well, we can't all solve murders now, can we? Either we get him in front of a judge, or we release him. You're an accessory to murder. Prove it. Who's going to jail today? TV. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to At the Heart of Business. I am your host, Judith Tate. At the Heart of Business is a conversation with women in business discussing their challenges and successes. I'd like to welcome my next guest, Lorna Kennedy. Lorna is an image and etiquette consultant. Welcome, Lorna. Thank you, Judith. It's my pleasure being here. Thank you so much for, for being here. And uh, you're gonna teach us a few things here. I love this place setting. But first, tell us about Lorna Inspires, Lorna's image and etiquette consulting business. <laughs> yes, for image and etiquette, I train people how to be confident in who they are, how to mm -hmm. dress the body they have, the colors. Colors are very important, they're electric. Yeah. How you, you present yourself at all times, not just for an occasion, but for a lifestyle. Your dining etiquette, your social, your business etiquette, how you, how you respond to positively to other people uh, in your network, um, in your workplace, in your social settings, all of that comes into place. So, uh, Tell us what kind of services you provide, because you kind of uh, described a lot of stuff. So what are all the services you provide? So I do the dining etiquette. I do color analysis. I do body analysis to make sure the clothing that you're wearing suit the body you have and your lifestyle. You're not just shopping for what's on the rack at the store or what someone says, but what is geared for you, individual. So the color analysis and the body analysis, is that kind of combined into like finding the right clothing? Is that That's what that right. means? That's right, that's right. Oh, okay. So it's, it's saving you money in the long run because you're not just buying and you have stuff in your closet that you don't wear with tags there because you don't like them, they don't fit you, but what is geared for you, you have that confidence to take with you. And do you go with people to the store? I certainly do. I do personal shopping. Oh. I make suggestions. I go with my clients or I do for my clients as well. Oh, wow. Okay, I'll have to get you to come with me because I never know what to put together. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Unless it's athleisure wear, I don't, know what to, I don't know what to put on. Okay, I can definitely help you with that, Not, no worries. Excellent. So do you just work with adults? Do you work with children, youth? Like, who's your, who's your client? My client, uh, from both male and female, mm -hmm. and right now I am looking at executives Oh. To give you that presence, because a lot of people are struggling with how they climb the ladder, what is holding them back, what is what is your sabotage, and we give people the confidence. Um, so women, men, uh, even children, so my clients can vary. So yeah, when people see me, they said, "Okay, can you help me?" Yeah, of course we can. Oh, wonderful! And um, I think you you recently did something with the youth. I certainly did. We had yeah. a symposium with um, Drape, and we go through. Uh, success in the workplace, what oh. you need to prepare yourself for the workplace, to be confident, to be different, and to elevate yourself. We also uh, do uh, dining etiquette on the second days so people get the confidence how you navigate successfully. You're not just being awkward or feeling ashamed or, or embarrassed. You don't know, you see a table setting and you're wondering, oh, what goes there? What is that? We give you the confidence to navigate. Oh, that's great. I can't wait till we talk about this because when I walk into, <laughs> you know, say a, a restaurant or a dining experience like this, I'm, I'm completely lost. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. We give you the confidence and that's why I'm wearing my gloves today because I was placing and doing a place setting. So I wanted to make sure when you dine in, you know that you're confident, your place settings, they're clean and sterile. So that's why I'm wearing my gloves. Oh, perfect. I love it. Thank so, you. Tell us why you got into this very unique business and like how. Okay, thank you for that. 
At the age of 13, I was a girl guide, and a colleague in introduced me to some articles in the Jamaican newspaper on modern etiquette. And among ourselves, we would practice and um, how to be respectful to our elders, but that information stayed with me. We would make scrapbooking and we would practice among ourselves. Becoming an adult at the time when I was coming to Canada, I thought to myself, what would I be doing in Canada when I, once I got here? And the idea popped in my head, okay, I can further my training in etiquette, but as an immigrant, it takes a while. But over the years, I, I, I kept the information in the back of my mind, looking out and looking out until the idea came, the opportunity came, and here I am today. And how exactly did that, that opportunity come? Is there a story behind that? Absolutely, there is a story, <laughs> okay. so for sure. Yeah, let's hear my that. jobs are always short-lived. I went back, came, went back to school once I got to Canada, but my jobs are always short-lived. And it became a, at a point of frustration. I was wondering, what's going on? I had my other, my other friends, they had their career, they were doing well. What about me? So I cried out one night, I was laying in my bed, and would you believe it? Soon after, somebody called me and she said, Lorna, I saw a vision of a woman and I think it's you. And she got a word for me. I took that word and I did that. But after doing that specific um, task, after a while, uh, it was catering, I thought, oh, I didn't want to do catering all the time. And because it was a home-based business, so I, then I went back and I prayed because I'm a believer. And I said, Lord, is there anything else that I can do? And at that moment, I got a word, go on Instagram. And I'm thinking, what? Instagram? I went and there was somebody offering adult dining etiquette the following weekend. I was, I was elated. Uh. I was so happy. I signed up and I told her I really wanted to train in etiquette. And she said, I think you should. So the opportunity came and I saw it and I did it. Oh, that's amazing. That's Thank a beautiful you. story. Thank you. I, I love that. Okay. So now training in etiquette, is, is that like a certification that you got? I, I did. I okay. have several certifications that I, that I have received because, you know, different places or different people may have one portion. You may do the dining etiquette. You may do the social. So mm. everything comes together for me. So I can, I can be able to, to offer so much more. Oh, that's great. So, okay, tell us what we've got here <laughs> and, and how, how to navigate this when okay. we, we go into a dining setting. Okay, thank you so much. So once, once you, you have a, a place set in, you know, you're, 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 you always start from your outer. So for this, we know we have a, a spoon on our right because it's like a BMW, we call it the bread. So the bread is always on your right, your meal in the middle and your water. All your water, your everything is on this side. So your, your wine, your water, uh, your champagne, your tea later on mm. is always on your right. So we have our, our um, silverware and we come in. So you always take from the left, uh, from the outer, inside so the first meal you're going to be having is a soup because once you see this so always look at your place setting and that will entail tell you what meal you're going to be having the once this is off you have your napkin napkin is very important you always take your napkin and you fold it the fold goes towards you and you keep the ends open huh so when you dab in you never wipe you never use a bib but you <laughs> dab gently and you place so the, the the mess is not exposed and once you have had your salad then you have your meat your 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 sorry start with, with your salad then you have your, your soup and your salad and the main the main course your entree after that we have our bread all over here so the bread we have our um our bread knife we have here we have our our dessert dessert for your um so after everything is cleared, then we will do this, and you'll have your tea, your whatever dessert you're having, your tea is here for you to sip. The, the handle is always to the three o'clock. So taking, for instance, that the, the mouth of the cup is a clock. So mm -hmm. you think 12, six o'clock, three, mm -hmm. nine. If you're right-handed, it's always on, on the right here. Oh, that's beautiful. I love Thank it. You. Oh my goodness, I could spend all day on this and I was laughing 
about uh, the napkin because I'm the first one to grab it and then tuck it right in here because <laughs> if any, if I'm going to spill anything, it's coming right down my shirt. So, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for that. You're welcome. Okay, so. Um, in a professional environment, and especially in, in you know, this type of business, and you're, you're out there interacting, you're working with so many different people, how do you stay true to your values? I stay true to my value to stay in focus. My brand is my brand. When I, whenever I go out, people, when I tell people what I do, they, right away they can say, yes, I can see it, because the way I carry myself, your brand it represents you at all times, your business. So you always m maintain that, stay in focus, and not leaning over to what others are saying or doing, but stay in focus and do what is yours. That's great. You. Have you had any setbacks that oh. have impacted you? Oh yes, several. Yeah? But okay. when I've had these setbacks, I use them to propel. Uh, be, being adaptable to do continuous learning and to see what next can I do to up, uplift what I have because recently I got trained as a workplace practitioner and that has really um, topped up what I have so I can offer so much more. Oh, I love it. Thank you. How do you define success? Success is for me is doing what you're meant to do because for me, I was doing the wrong thing. I wasn't paying attention because remember I said I came with the idea to further my training in etiquette but I was doing other things that mm. were not meant for me and I was making mistakes and it brought frustration but the moment I asked I got the answer and that's where I stay focused that's my success because I am doing what is for Lorna mm -hmm. what Lorna is supposed to do to help people oh and you fit this role perfectly thank you my lady and that that is really I, I really like that point because it just shows that sometimes when things are not working out, we need to take a step back and ask for that, that guidance. That's true. Because when things aren't working out, it's often a good indication that you're, you're just not on the right path. You're not on the right path. That's so true. good for you for recognizing that and doing Thank that. You. Thank you. It took a while. It took a while. But once there's life, there's hope. Yes. So you continue. Oh, that's great. Thank you. And um, who are the people, dead or alive, who have influenced your business path and why? Oh, my goodness. I love Lady Oprah. Oh, yes. And Lady Martha. Martha Stewart. Yes. I love them because they're always the pioneers. They're always going for things that, and it's not just one thing. They have so much on their plate going and making an impact. And people love that mm -hmm. because sometimes people say, oh, you need to stay in your lane and do just one thing. But these ladies... They're successful in every aspect of their career. Mm -hmm. Martha Stewart was saying she started her, her business at age 50. Yeah. So never allow anything or anyone to deter you. Yeah. I love them. Oh, that's great. And you know, it's true. I've often heard that a lot of times we don't have it figured out until we're like in our 40s and 50s. And it's, it's so true. And I guess it's just from all the life experiences, all the trials and errors, and by the time by the time you hit that, uh, you know, 40 or 50 year mark, you, you got it. You got it. Everything comes together. It's a compilation of your experiences, your, what, you, what you have learned, what you have seen, what you have gone through. That builds strength and yes. character. Exactly. And how have you been resourceful in your business? I have been so, to use the skills that I have, um, as you said, the, I have the catering as well to implement, um, to help people, to feed people, to make sure when you go out you have that confidence with you and the young people to, to, how to help them to navigate successfully their behavior, to bring to the, to the forefront their work life, everything, so, yep. Oh, that's great. Uh, Pioneer's advice. I see you've um, written down a couple here. Uh, in 20 seconds, tell me about Invest in continuous learning. Invest in continuous learning. We never stop learning. We never stop learning because that's the world, the, the global world is changing. Everything about us is changing around us. And how we adapt, we need adaptability. Later, uh, recently, we all went through COVID. We mm -hmm. had to learn to be online. A lot of people had to learn Zoom in, in a short span of time. So when we, when we adapt, when we continue to learn and adapt to the changes in society and to make ourselves confident, we can offer so much more. That's excellent. Thank you so much, Lorna, for joining us. This was wonderful. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on another episode of At the Heart of Business.
connect with us by